All right, welcome everybody to the very first edition of our Owner's Corners Mastermind. So today we are very fortunate to have with us as our guest expert, Samuel Sanchez of Augusta Home Care Recruiting. And, you know, he, let me tell you guys, you, you, you're you in store for a treat. You know, uh, mm -hmm. Sam really is probably one of the one of the most expert people I've ever met when it comes to caregiver recruiting. And it's specifically work how to recruit people that understand the caregiving process, how to convert those those people that are caregivers at home and bring them into the fold of your agency. So they provide a great service and they're, you know, if you ever want to reach out to them, all the information will be available. You know, for those who are attending us live in the you know owner's corner mastermind uh, member page. And for those who are watching us on Facebook, YouTube, you know, LinkedIn, anywhere, anywhere that you see our videos or hear this, you know, you'll have all the information in the description and everything else. So let's run through because this is our first one so that people have a better understanding as to what to expect. Every one of our Owner's Corner Masterminds, number one, first and foremost, these are free. They are a free resource for you home care agency owners that, you know, that you're interested in growing your business and you want to learn more about specific aspects. We'll be doing these on a regular basis. The more participation we get, the more often I'll do these, you know, but for now, let's, let's just uh, count on it being at least once a month, if not more often. And they're all going to start out the same way, same format. Every time you'll know exactly what to expect. We are going to have a quick 10 to 15 minute training on a very specific topic by one of our guest panel experts or by me. You know, either way, uh, whether we have somebody as a guest or not, you're going to get 10 to 15 minutes of training. This is no fluff training. You're not here to get pitched to. You are here to get taught. Right. At the end of this uh, training, we are going to open up, you know, we're going to ask a few questions. I'm going to really try to get to the heart of what I've seen as a consultant, uh, what you guys are all asking all the time. So this way, the guest expert will be able to answer a few questions, a few more questions, go maybe a little bit deeper than what they've already decided to come in on. And then the cameras come off. Because now we get into the mastermind section. Ca the recording comes off, not the cameras. But with this is where we get to the heart of the matter. We're going to pick a random participant. And we're going to work through a problem as it relates to the topic at hand. Today, it's recruiting, you know, strategic recruiting of caregivers. So we're going to take one lucky participant, maybe two, depending on time. And we're going to run through this. We're going to get... Here, what issues are they having related to this subject in their agency? We're going to uh, we're going to share some thoughts as a group to try to help them work through it, and then they're going to get a free consulting session with myself and with the guest expert. We're going to help them get to the root of the matter, ask the right questions, bring them the solutions, so this way it becomes everybody can learn from the experience and hardships of others. This is the Owner's Corners Mastermind. If you haven't become a member and if you haven't signed up, you know, keep an eye out, join our mailing, mailing list, and you'll be able to participate in our next one. Without further ado, let's, uh, let's welcome Mr. Samuel Sanchez. How's it going, Sam? <laughs> good, good. Thank you so much, Julio, for having me on today. Actually very excited to be chatting with you all today that's joined us. And then also just... I love talking about home care and I love talking about yeah. recruiting caregivers. So it's an honor to have uh, this opportunity to speak with you all today. Um, <clears throat> so with that being said, just want to give a quick, you know, background about myself and intro is my name is Samuel Sanchez and I'm the co-founder and chief of customer success at Augusta Care. And Augusta Care is an intelligent software company that helps senior care businesses hire the best caregivers easily. Uh, now, further background about myself. Prior to Augusta, I've been a digital marketer for home care and senior care agencies for six going on seven years now, helping them recruit thousands of caregivers. So today I'm wanting to share some strategies I've learned throughout my experience to help you recruit more caregivers for your agency. So the first topic we're gonna be talking about today is improve your hiring funnel. 
As an operator, you need to simplify your hiring funnel to only entail the steps that are truly pertinent to the career opportunity you're offering. The more in-depth questions and steps on more one-on-one -on -one understanding who they are as a person can really be covered during your in-person interview or your onboarding calls. Really, I've noticed when speaking with thousands of operators is it really bubbles down to when this applicant's face-to-face -face with you. So mitigating that back and forth before you getting them into office is going to be truly game-changing when it comes to getting more people into your funnel and at the end result, hired. Uh, one thing I really suggest for an operator to do to really understand how you can simplify your funnel and make it more efficient is actually applying to your own agency. Go through the process yourself. Uh, I really suggest don't tell your recruiter, don't tell your staff, but actually applying with a fake name, use a family or friend's phone number, a different email, and really put yourself in the caregiver's shoes. Are there repetitive questions? Do you feel disconnected and not knowing what's going on? And on the flip side, it also gives you an opportunity to understand maybe steps that you're currently missing that should be implemented to your existing funnel. Now, I wanna also talk about your response time. Your response time matters. At the bare minimum, you need to reply to an applicant within 24 hours. That's at the bare minimum. Even if it's a simple application confirmation, uh, a confirmation message, saying, hey, XYZ applicant, thank you for submitting your application. We'll be reaching out to you from this number. So expect a call from this time to this time. Something as simple as that can just make the applicant feel more confident and comfortable that they've chosen the right agency and they could be more willing to wait to hear back from you rather than going and applying to three to four more agencies. Now, realistically, Ideally, you really need to be replying to an applicant within the first hour, if not the first second they've submitted their application. But if you're already taking 24 to 48 hours to get back to an applicant, the first goal you should be focusing on is replying to them within 24 hours of their application submission. Hey, Sam, sorry to interrupt here. I have a question. Um, would automation be a good way to respond to people when they're doing this? Yeah. You know, all right. So so automation, um, automation is going to be beneficial to making this more of an efficient uh, process. Uh, I know home care owners like to throw around the word, it's a high touch industry, which is true, but you also need to make sure it's an efficient industry as well. Senior care is kind of behind the curve, so to say. Um, so having this automation of messaging applicants, even if it's just an automated text message, um, or you're using a Calendly link that sends them drip reminders, as simple as that, is really gonna help you stand out compared to others in your service area. So automation, to address it, Julio, don't be scared of it. Actually embrace it. It's gonna help you streamline this process. Yeah. Now, the next topic is be an agency that helps nurture caregivers to enter this industry. Really, don't be a gatekeeper to industry entrance. We're in a caregiver shortage. You need to focus on bringing in more caregivers into this industry. Offering training opportunities and mentorship for new caregivers is going to be key for growing and retaining your caregiver bench. Now, I'm in Los Angeles, California, and one common bottleneck here is caregivers need to be HCA registered with the state of California. That's becoming a home care aid. And I've talked to countless owners that state, Sam, there's not enough caregivers in my service area. I've talked to them all. I can't get any more. Yet when we dive into their funnel, we're noticing that they're denying 60 family caregivers off bat because they're not HCA registered. They're sending them a PDF saying, hey, go to this link, register here and come back to me when you're done. You just pushed away 60 people that are showing they want to enter the industry because you don't wanna take the time out of your day to just be like, hey, let me help you with this. It takes 15 minutes out of your day to hire or to bring in a new entrant and possibly hire them in the back end. And if worst case scenario, you don't hire them, you just helped increase the pool of qualified caregivers in your service area and you could swing back around to them in the near future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, actually a common problem in a number of states, not just California. Like, for example, um, Florida's like that, New Jersey's like mm -hmm. that. Um, 
it there while in states other states like maybe ohio for example where they don't need to be registered they still you know people prefer that cna because of because of the higher level of training instead of really taking advantage of that person down the street that's taking care of their grandmother for the last 10 years mm -hmm. you know and that really knows what they're doing just because they don't you know they don't have uh, fancy initials at the end of their at the end of their uh, job application yeah. so that's fantastic yeah it, it it truly is it's it's leveraging what you have essentially mm -hmm. play the cards you are dealt and once you know how to leverage what's in front of you, you're, you're really going to be able to stand out in front of the, with the competitors in your service area. And riffing off that worst case scenario of you not hiring this person that you spent 15 to 30 minutes helping enter the industry. Worst case scenario is you're going to be talked very highly amongst the applicant pool in your community. Mm -hmm. They didn't hire me, but I am now certified or registered to something I've shown interest in. And that's right. always going to be a token of gratitude in their end when they share with their friends and family. Exactly. And then lastly on the slide is always be hiring. I, I, I mean, it sounds very simple, but don't stop hiring caregivers. Even if you have a se no senior to place them with when you're hiring a new caregiver, having a caregiver bench that is ready to go is far more valuable than saving a couple hundred bucks a week, not having them. <laughs> so, I really suggest finding activities you could fill up their schedule with in the meantime until you find a senior you could place them with. And there's a plethora of ideas you can do to, to help them, I guess, come into the fold of the workflow. Um, you know, off top, I suggest if you have a new hire, pairing them with a tenured caregiver and having them shadow a caregiver so they can actually understand what's going to go on in this industry. What should they expect? What's the real day to day? Um, one thing I really suggest doing is if you have a caregiver that you can't pair right now is hire them and bring them in office, have them help you market around the neighborhood, give them a stack of flyers to go to hand out or to go to potential referral providers. The fact that a real caregiver is going, going to them is going to make a huge difference. And then lastly, also give them an opportunity to shadow with your care coordinators and your schedulers giving the caregivers an opportunity to understand what's going on when a caregiver calls out last minute and seeing the hair pulling and the anxiety that fosters with that is going to be game changing. So they can actually understand the impact they have if they feel like they're going to call out one minute before their scheduled time when they are out in the field. Yeah, that's actually great advice. It's one of the things when I'm, I work with, uh, my own clients, when we're starting to put in the strategic operation models, I actually always suggest them to do that. Part of the orientation should be spend a day in the office and see the reality of what people are going through. It really improves the long-term operational functionality of the business and it reduces call outs and it in, improves uh, client relations. And it, it, it actually um, helps save you money in the long run. Spending an extra hundred bucks on that first day of orientation will save save you tens of thousands of dollars over the next year with that one caregiver. You know, hell, if you can just use that one day experience, spend an extra hundred bucks or hundred fifty dollars to keep the caregiver there all day, and she stays for one more client, you're talking about an average of eleven to fifteen thousand dollars in additional profit in that first year from not having to replace that caregiver. That's fantastic advice. I mean, I'm glad you actually, uh, you preach that to your, your clients yeah, as well. All, you know, all the time. It, yeah. It's, it's game changing. Honestly, they, they have, they have a hot lead in their hands. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whether you can place them or not utilize it, it's an opportunity yep. to really foster a connection. Yep. So now this next topic is speak your applicant's language. So let's just be honest. The fact of the matter is we're in a seller's market if you're a home care agency and the caregivers are the sellers of their services and you're the buyer of their services. Caregivers have a lot of choices right now in terms of the best employer for them. So to differentiate yourself in the interview process, try making it friendly, try making it a friendly discussion within the interview. Begin by setting the tone of the conversation in a way that opens it to more dialogue and produces more open conversations. 
Don't try just reading a script going line to line and keeping it structured. Obviously, that's a little bit deterring from when I say be efficient in the previous slide, but it really opens up the book to discover more things. Um, so I really suggest talk to the points that matter most to them. If they are adamant about flexible schedules, then only talk to what you can do to accommodate their flexible schedule or accommodate that flexible schedule for them. And then learn why they need this flexibility. Are they caring for a loved one at home? Do they have a second job? Taking the time to learn about their life outside of work will lessen the surprises down the road on both ends of the relationship. You now won't have to worry about a caregiver coming in saying, hey, you called me four times on my day off. I told you I have another job or ghosting you and making you feel like, hey, this caregiver is unresponsive. Now, provide transparency about your agency. I've seen countless times where operators state that a caregiver comes in demanding all of these high level benefits and pay and, and these requirements they need, but yet the operator doesn't try to investigate where they got this expectation from. So setting realistic expectations as to what your agency can provide is going to be key to establishing and fostering a relationship that is going to be retained throughout your business's life. One example I give here actually is stating that you offer a 401k, pay time off, health, dental, vision insurance on a part-time job post, yet all of those benefits are not attainable until you become full-time. Those are the type of miscommunications and misrepresentations that maybe are beneficial to getting more applicants in the front end, but in the long end, you're hurting your ascent, you're hurting your ROI, you're hurting your investment of getting more hired applicants in your agency. Yeah, that's, uh, that's actually a big trend. You'll see, like one of the things that I, I usually tell uh, home care agency owners is to include an up to range, you know, mm -hmm. like when on the application and, but it's got to be realistic. Don't put that you can earn up to $30 an hour when you know very well that you're not paying anybody in your agency more than 18. All yeah. right. But you have, people have to know realistically what to expect. You know, I've, I've seen hundreds of ads like that, that just people, they're talking about mileage reimbursement, but then when they come in and I hear it from the caregivers, Oh yeah, you know they talked about mileage reimbursement, but it's only during certain specific circumstances, and it's not mm -hmm. really, mm -hmm. you know, what it is. Or they're billing the client a, the dollar fifty an hour for the mileage, but they're only passing along fifty two cents to me. Yeah, you yeah. know, like that. Yeah, that's yeah. um, that's a problem. <laughs> Definitely, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it's it's from you know from not only being a part of Augusta and my own digital marketing experience working with agencies, it's just. Mm -hmm. It's common. So, and, yep. you know, to be the devil's advocate, not many operators understand what they're doing in this. You know, they're just thinking, I have these benefits. I'm already paying for them. I've right. already had to fall in line with it. So I'm going to promote the heck out of it. Right. But in reality, yeah, it's, it's going what you said, Julio. It's like, don't say you offer a 401k, but you have to work three mm -hmm. years right. to get that 401k. Or don't say mm -hmm. you're hiring at $30 an hour when only one person in your hundred caregiver bench is yep. actually getting $30 an hour. Right. Right. Or another big one is that they'll talk about health, vision, and dental, but it's only available to office staff, but they yes. put it out there for the caregivers. Look, you know, at the end of the day, there's going back on what you were saying. And, you know, this has just been my experience because I get, um, I get a lot of calls from agency owners that listened to a lot of the look there's a lot of really good people in this industry but there's a lot of shysters out there <laughs> and there's there's people out there claiming the role of being an expert in home care that maybe worked for an agency for 10 minutes and they're charging people a lot of money and they're giving them this terrible advice you know and this is where a lot of this is coming from from people that have no industry knowledge, never understood what it is to be in the this industry. And they're telling them, yeah, you know, cast the wide net, tell them everything in a perfect world scenario and get them in the door. Oh, they'll figure it out once they're hired. You yeah. know, <laughs> and that that's just bad. And, and that's why just so many agencies are struggling with retention, yes. right? It's, um, 
what I've noticed through Augusta is when we're talking with a lot of agencies um, is we've noticed a little spike in it's easier to get a, a higher volume of applicants. Yes. But with that increase of higher volume, there's no increase with hires. No. And casting that wide net is good in theory. It truly is. There, mm -hmm. There's benefits with it. But we're in senior care. That wide net is really a small niche. We're right. looking at a certain type of person that has a compassionate heart and the willingness mm -hmm. to learn. And that yes. can care for someone else's family as if they were own. Right. They, they were their own. And then add on the fact that now they have to be in your service area. They have to be registered. They have to be trained. That wide net becomes very, very small, very fast. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. Now, this is my last slide. It's create your sourcing strategy. You must be different, not only in what you say, but also where you say it. Word of mouth and employee referrals are two of the top recruitment sources today, according to Home Care Pulse. If you see here in this report, this is listing the top recruitment platforms, obviously internet, meaning indeed employees, again, internet with social media, but you can see here employees of employees referrals and social media are the top two. So I really suggest that you need to leverage your social media handles to extend this to micro environments within your service area. There is a vast pool of people waiting and wanting to see your content and they're wanting to share your agency. You just need to make it easier for them to do so. And leveraging social media, it makes it as simple as a click of a button to share your agency. One thing I'd also like to add on here is don't be dependent on one funnel of caregivers, caregiver sourcing. Don't just think that, okay, well, employee referrals are working, so I'm going to dive 100% into that. Make sure to diversify your funnels. Uh, right now, we're still in an iffy market where you kind of have to be in that mentality of, I want to be there in the right place at the right time. But keeping a diversified portfolio of funnels is really going to help you understand the market as a whole and where you can give and take in certain areas of what optimizations you need to focus on. All right. All right. That's fantastic. Fantastic. Definitely, uh, definitely want, want to have, um, you know, again, that's just one of those issues that we talk about that I talk about all the time on our YouTube channel and everything else. You know, you, you have to, you have to know where to talk to people, how to talk to people, get your messaging the right way. And I can't stress this enough. I mean, companies like what you guys do, like you guys and other companies that use technology as part of the tools, don't be afraid of it. All right. We're not, we are high touch as an industry, but we also need to learn how to be high value. Mm -hmm. And the more you're avoiding implementing technology to provide that additional value to your caregivers, to your clients, the more damage you're doing to yourself as an agency. You know, it, it it's, believe me, I've got clients that have gone, you know, from that three to $4 million range. And over the years, just because they're afraid of technology, because the owners, maybe they're, they're a little bit up there in age or they're just they don't want to they have that fixed mindset mm -hmm. it it brings their business down and once you get into that downward spiral you get that bad reputation especially with caregivers and i'm just saying speaking because from personal experience sam was a uh you were a caregiver yourself my wife was a caregiver that's actually how i met her at being a caregiver i've had my house filled with caregivers most of most of my married life so I hear all of this all the time. Oh, yeah, you know, this agency is no good. That one's no good because of this, that, and the third. And most of the time, you know, Sam's absolutely right. They're finding the jobs on social media. They're who's hiring? Oh, well, such and such put out a post. You know, I saw this company on my Twitter account. You know, oh, Instagram or, or TikTok, or that's the new, the new one where everybody's advertising on. It it helps. It really does. So if you guys want to get a hold of Augusta or Sam, there's all their information on the screen. Please, by all means, do yourselves a favor, reach out. You're really not going to find a more qualified group of experts in this realm. Um, there's a lot of people that do recruiting on different levels. Their methods are very unique. 
and you're not going to find them again like i said not not in too many places so this brings us to a close on the first part of our of our mastermind group now we're going to start transitioning into you know the portion of the owner's corner where we actually start working with individuals as far as our video goes this is it for now this is all we're we're doing because we want to make sure that we respect people's privacy that we respect their you know oh, their space you know undo competition don't want to find out don't want to put people's dirty secrets out there you know that whole thing so just keep in mind you know if you're watching this replay somewhere on on our one of our social media platforms there are going to be links in the description on how you can sign up for the owner's corner um newsletter where you will give out a bunch of great information and tips and everything on all everything related to tr strategically operating your home care space especially if you're in the private pay market and you know keep an eye out because that's where we first put uh, inform everybody on when when our next uh, owner's corner mastermind is going to be and what the topics and we've got a lot of great experts you know, uh, lined up for you moving on everything from, you know, recruiting today to business development, sales and marketing to content writing. And even we even have a few people coming on that will help you with wealth management and transferring ownership of your business. You know, so keep a, keep this all in mind. Let's start moving forward and let's figure out, you know, how we can help you become a better home care agency owner. See you guys next time. We're moving on now to the next segment. Thanks again for uh, being here, Sam. We appreciate Thank you for your time. Me on.